Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton from the Flourish Academy where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, I'm going to share the logo creation process, but first, please check out our sponsor, YM Camera, for all of your photography needs. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your photographer friends. It helps us to produce more videos. This video is intended for those of you that are in the process of creating your first logo or maybe updating the one that you already have. And I'm going to share my approach because it's fast and it involves minimal cost. Good logos are simple. They're focused and clear. They're memorable. They're versatile. They're relevant. And there's a few questions you can ask yourself such as, does this fit my style and personality? Can the text and the graphic portion be used independently of one another? Does it scale well? Is it masculine or feminine? Do I want to convey creative whimsy or traditional professionalism? Can I read the font? Is the typography congruent? In other words, do the weights, kerning, and capitalization make sense? Can it be shown in both color and grayscale? Does it need to be on a light or dark background, or does it matter? Once you've started to identify your style, the next question is, do I want to create this myself? Do I want to spend some time in Photoshop customizing your logo, or do I want to have it done for me? Now, obviously, there are a variety of websites that you can use, but I recommend jumping over to Etsy. I just typed in logos for photographers and you can see that there are many, many choices, but if you find one, uh, let's see here, such as this one, I believe this shop, right, will customize a logo for you. So you choose a design that you like and they will put your name and your initials in for approximately $13. Now, I think I think it goes up from there, right? It depends. I don't know what any of these mean. I've never been here, but I'm just suggesting that if you want someone else to create your logo for you, you could browse Etsy, find a designer, that suits your style, and then either contact them or just purchase, send them your information, and they will create it for you. And again, as you can see from the pricing, you can do that uh, relatively cheaply. Okay, but the second option is purchasing components or downloading PSD files, Photoshop files that you can customize yourself. So for that, I typically like to go over to Creative Market so I'll just type in photography logos and see what comes up. And what I would recommend doing is scrolling through these logos and these different designers, maybe finding a designer that you like and just seeing if it resonates with you and your style. See, there's a really big difference between these floral hand-drawn logos and these more classic professional, what they're calling elegant logos, which one of those suits your personality and style? That's what I would start with. But I wouldn't get too caught up or overwhelmed in the fact that there are probably more than 333 pages worth of logos. I would just browse the first couple of pages. I wouldn't overthink this. You can always pivot. You can always change. It's not that expensive. But I would try to find a pack. This looks like a pretty large pack pack that has different components that you can put together. So I'm just clicking this one. Again, I've not been here to Amber and Inks shop, but you can see all of the different components so that you, oh, okay. You can create your own combinations. Oh, very interesting. Okay. This has a lot of different components to it. And then there are examples. Although the funny thing is I typed in photography logos and I'm not sure how that relates, but I suppose it could. So let's go back here and okay, let's try this one. Logo templates and elements for photographers. And it looks like, right, there are just a ton of different components. So if this is the case, why don't we go ahead and purchase this and then take these into Photoshop and I can give you some tips on customizing these logos. 
Okay, so I just spent $14 on these logos, not because I need them, but because I'm going to teach you how to use them. So hey, do me a favor and support the Flourish Academy. Make sure you join our free community on Facebook. Just search for FA Community and check out our website at www.flourish.academy to see all of the resources and courses that we offer. Okay, let's go ahead and download this file. This will download as a zip file. I will unzip all of the components and bring them into Photoshop. Okay, so let's take a look at what we purchased. Inside of this zip file, we have these fonts. So a lot of logo designers will use fonts that may not be native. You don't have them on your computer. So she has them all listed here, all of the fonts she used with links. So if you wanted to match many of these fonts, you would have to go download and install them. I'm not gonna take the time to do that here, but this is just something worth noting because when we jump into Photoshop, we are most likely going to get an error message that we don't have some of these fonts. Okay, let's go back to our folder. We have all of these PNG files. So here are many of the design elements, as you can see, and it looks like oh, we have a lot of elements in here as well that you can use, which is very nice. Different components, update, extra. Okay, that looks great. So let's open this PSD file inside of Photoshop so that we can check it out. You'll also see that there is an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, Il Illustrator is great for working with fonts. I just tend to stick with Photoshop because it's what I know. So if I jump over to Photoshop, when I open this file, you'll see that I'm getting all of these messages about those fonts. And that's simply because I don't have them installed on my machine. Now, I'm going to say cancel here and I'm not going to resolve them, but Photoshop will still give me a preview of what they look like, which is really nice because if I decide, for instance, I can turn off these different folders. You see, if you click the visibility icon next to the folders themselves, you can see how I'm turning the visibility on and off. And if I decide that I like this particular logo, then I can simply expand this folder by clicking it. And you'll see it has an exclamation point next to it. And it's saying, hey, you don't have that font. In fact, let's zoom in with a command or control plus spacebar to access the pan tool. And let's jump over to that logo. And you can see here, if I turn that text on and off, it's this layer. If I select this layer and then press T on my keyboard to access the text tool, it's telling me that the font is Priscilla script, which I know that I don't have. So I'm going to click on it and Photoshop is going to say, hey, you don't have this font. Would you like to substitute it? Well, the truth is, if you don't have this font, you don't have a choice. <laughs> You're gonna have to substitute it. And when I do that, well, you see what just happened to the font. So if I decide that this is the logo or the font that I like, then I'm going to make sure and find Priscilla script and download it and install it before working on my logo. So that's just a note about fonts. Let's press Command or Control minus to zoom back out. But I find this particular document to be very helpful because what she's done here is given you a ton of ideas on how you can use the different components in order to create your logo. You do not have to create a logo that looks like any of these. But again, they're just suggestions on how you might wanna take maybe uh, this graphic, this circular graphic with the floral elements and place your name on it. Let's decide we like this 23.png, this portable network graphic, which just means it's transparent. I'm going to click and drag this down to open it in Photoshop. So there's the graphic I wanna use. So I wanna create a logo using this graphic. And what I'm going to do, I think the best place to start, let's see actually what size this is. Okay, so about 1400 pixels wide. Why don't we then, let's create a new document. Let's say file new and yes, let's make this 2000 pixels wide by 2000 pixels tall and just create it. So I'll have a blank canvas. I'm just gonna move this over, grab this camera 
press V on my keyboard in order to access the move tool and click and drag it over onto this canvas. Now I'm using a white background currently, but what's nice about this transparent file is that I can experiment with different backgrounds and see what it's going to look like. Okay, I don't need this file anymore, so I'm just going to close it with a command or control W. Press F in order to get into full screen. That's just how I like to operate. And then I'm going to press T to add text. Now I'm going to add this text in black, understanding that at some point I could probably change it. Oh, and you know what? Why don't we see what font she used? on that particular, is it, yeah, there it is, that particular logo. She used a font called Rochella Script. I don't have that font, but if I decided that I loved it, I could absolutely go grab it from the internet and install it. That's good to know, but you can pick whatever font you want. If you wanna pick something you already have, that's fine. So I'm gonna jump back to this window and again, I pressed T in order to access the text tool. And I'm just going to click and type my name, HJL Photography. I pressed Command A to select all of that to bring down the size a little bit using, what I'm using here is the character palette. If you don't see this palette, you can simply go to Window and then choose Character. Okay, so with that in mind, I don't have the font that she was using. That's okay, I have a ton of fonts. I could experiment and see what font I like for this. I'll just go ahead and choose this one because I kind of like the way that looks with this graphic element at the top. So let's press V on my keyboard to just move this around and maybe Command or Control T to size it however you would like. So I could do something like this press enter or return. Now this video is not at all intended to teach you Photoshop. This is just to help you generate, to choose and generate a logo. If you wanna learn everything you need to know about Photoshop, we have a complete course, Photoshop for Photographers, inside of the Flourish Academy where you can learn everything you need to know about graphic elements as well as text in this case. Let's press Command or Control minus to zoom back out and Listen, at this point, you could have a logo. You could be done. You could save this. Let's go ahead and save this as a Photoshop file. I'll just call this test logo. Save that as a PSD to retain the layers and say OK to that. Then I could save it out as a JPEG or start using it. You could also double click to unlock the background layer and then choose color overlay select a color and you could start to see what this would look like on different backgrounds if you had a different background. I don't think any of those look <laughs> terribly good, but the point is because it is transparent, you could do that. I'm going to just hit cancel and say okay to that. But at this point, your logo could be done. It could be that simple. Don't overthink it or let it frustrate you. Because remember, you could always go back to Etsy and just hire someone to put it together for you. But if you're a photographer, I would recommend that you learn some design capabilities inside of Photoshop so that you can take more control over this process. There are so many beautiful options on either Etsy or Creative Market. I'm quite certain that you could find something that's really close to what you're looking for. And with just a few minor adjustments, you know, like your name, <laughs> you would be all set and ready to go. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.